Hello! This is the fourth video in my build log series for my VR shoe. If you're new here, I'm trying to make a motorized shoe to be used with virtual reality. And I encourage you to look at the previous videos in this series to get an idea of what it's all about. I go over the design and what my progress has been so far. So, in this fourth video, I'll go over what I did last week. I mainly hooked up the speed controls to the motors and designed a, um, a case around the two drive units. So I'll get into that. Oh, and I tested it out, actually. I stepped on the shoe and turned the motors on and it was able to move my weight very easily uh, in in of the forward and back direction and left and right direction. It was, um, I was very satisfied, but let's get started. So here you can see, this is the first uh, photo I'm showing. And the reason I'm showing it is something I noticed is that the motor is not perfectly aligned. You can see that it's drooping down a little bit. I hope you can see that. So. One of the things I did last week was to correct that issue. So, basically, this plate here, I lengthened it so that these bolts, I, I, I would have longer bolts, but I would have bolts that go through both plates to keep the motor level. These are the plates that I came up with. The reason that they're in a teardrop shape like this was to make it easy to 3D print, uh, standing up, uh, tall-wise. I wanted to see if that was better, but I think printing in either direction is fine. And then these are the spacers for the bolts to make sure that everything is spaced evenly. So again, here's the small, um, so the small plate, and then I'll replace it with this one. Bolts will go through both, keeping the motor level. So there I replaced it. And then here you can see the bolts are going all the way through. Here are those spacers to make sure everything is spaced evenly. I ran out of, uh, these are 5.5 inch bolts. I ran out of them, so I used a six inch bolt until I was able to go to the store and buy some more. Okay, so that's one thing I did. Uh, this week. Now, I started working on adding the electronics to the shoe. Now, here I have flipped the shoe over. Here is the base, the platform, and I have screwed in a box that holds the speed control, a VEC. Okay, here's another photo. You can see the shoe is flipped on its side. And here it is with the VEC inside of it, and then a case that goes over it. This is a, a custom case that I made, I based it off of a design on Thingiverse and then just modified it to fit my needs, mainly to add these holes here so that I could plug in the sensor wires to it. And then here's another photo of what it looks like with the shoe in its normal position. The VEC has its motors, or I mean, I'm sorry, has its wires going up and then it'll come over to the motor. And then here is the second VEC, because there are two motors, so you need two speed controls. Here's where the second one went. I ended up actually um, taking the purple one and moving it right here, because I have this adapter for this connector, that where I can connect um, two of these into one end, and then it um, goes into, uh, like it's two to one. I'll show, it should show in the next photo. Yep, so both of the speed controls are connected to this adapter thing, and then the two connections on this end go to the one connection on this end. I found that when they were spaced apart like this, I couldn't um, use that adapter, so I just moved this one over here. So now I have a video that gives you a closer look at how the electronics are all hooked up, how it's hooked up to a laptop and the power supply and how all that works. Okay, here we are. The shoe 
is assembled for testing. I have added the electronics. You can see there's one back there and another back there. And they are connected to the motors. You have the three power cables and then the motor uh, sensor wire for the hall sensors for both of them. And then here's where the power comes in to the speed controls. And that goes to a power supply, 12 volt, 50 amps. And then to control the speed controls, you have this cord going into the side. And that goes over to the laptop where I can control it using the arrow keys. So to show you how that works, I turn the power supply on. And then I come here and click connect and it's connected it's showing the current readout now and if I click on the arrow keys you can see the motor turning all right that's how it works in the same place. Okay, I've hooked the computer up to the other VEC, which controls this motor, not this one. This one was the one that was just running. This one is now hooked up. So I, if I run this one, it goes this way, the other one goes this way. So again, the idea is if I want to start strafing, I will lift my foot up and the shoe will come along with me. Okay. So I'll lift my foot up, bring my foot down, back and bring my foot back so I'll be taking steps but the shoe will be keep keep bringing me back to where I started and I'll stay in the same spot and then take a step and then I'll bring it back If I want to go you know, diagonally, then, then both the motors would turn on, but I only have one of these cables, so I can only control one at a time oh, for this video. I'll go get another one later. 
So after I did testing, I decided to try to organize these wires a bit and cover uh, everything up. So cover all of this stuff up so that it will look more like it'll look in the final version. And the result of that is this. I want it to look a bit better in the final version, but for now, this is fine. It's just a bunch of panels uh, covering everything up. And then to organize the wires, there is a box above the motors that the VEX and the wires go up into. So, oops. Right here. The motor wires come up to here and here and go to the VEX. And then the power or the those TX90s that you saw before, those come up through this middle hole here, connect to that adapter, then go with the power supply. These two holes are for the USBs that can be plugged into the VEC. Okay. So that's cut, uh, everything covered up. There were a few other changes that I made as well from last time. I wanted to move the bearings that were in this panel and this panel to the wheel instead so that I could keep everything as small as possible and make it easier to assemble. So that's what I did. I, the way that works is if I just show the Omni wheel. The bearing now goes right here on the Omni wheel. Then on the other side, the same thing. And then for the panels, it's just the bolt head on one end, and then I will press a lock nut into the other end, and then it all screws together. That, those are the changes that I made this week. I, after this, I proceeded to cut out all these parts on the CNC and uh, redo the Omni wheels and put it all together. After the design, here is what the Omni wheel looks like. This is the space for the bearing now. Another photo, then that's what it looks like with the bearing inside of it. Here the two halves are together. And here I am assembling it again. The new back where I pressed a, uh, a lock nut in, as you can see. And I decided just to CNC this part since that was quicker. So that's what it looks like now. Oh, also there are these little spacers that keep the wheel from sliding along the bolt. There's the other little spacer there. And here it is with the motor on it. There, that one drive is all ready, set to go. And then I assemble the other drive and both of them are ready. I cut out another platform because the size was slightly different. Here I have all the ball transfers and all the screws and some of the panels, spacers, all ready to go to be assembled. So here I put the two drives on and the ball transfer units. And then here's some of the paneling. This is the bottom of the electronics box here. This is one of the side panels, probably that goes on this side. That's what the bottom looks like. And here's what it looks like with the VEX in it and all the wires nicely organized. Okay, and then here's what it looks like with all of the um, panels around it. So it looks like a, just a big giant box. And then here is a photo with my foot on it. I'm a size 10 to give you an idea of how big this box is. And that 
is all of the progress I made last week. I think it was quite a bit, and I actually got a little burnt out. I had to take a break, about a day and a half break from the project to get some other things done. So next up that I'm going to work on is the component that will actually strap to your foot um, but also keep you strapped to the shoe itself. And I went over this when I went over the design in detail, I think in the second video in this series, but I will just briefly mention it here again. This is one of my old designs where I tested the concept out. I'm going to use roughly the same concept in this design too. So your foot would be strapped right here. These are just some Velcro straps I used, but I want to design something that is better, more like maybe a snowboard binding. But you would be strapped into this, and then when you lift your foot up, you would um, this whole thing would lift up with you and slide along these rods. So the whole shoe wouldn't lift up with you, it would just be this component. So if I move this, it would be like this sliding along the rods, if the rods didn't come up with it. But I think you get the idea. Okay, so you would still be attached to all of the components down here, but you could still lift your, your foot up, and if you bring your foot forward, like you're taking a step, everything would come along with you. You can also pivot your foot. There, there's a bearing here, so that you can pivot your foot like you normally would when you're walking. So that is the idea behind how you are going to be able to take a normal step with this thing attached to your foot, where when you lift your foot up during your step, your foot will lift up, but this doesn't come off the ground, it stays. And as you bring your foot forward, this will just slide along with you. Then you bring your foot down and the motors activate, bringing you back. Okay. If you like this content, uh, be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more, you can subscribe. And if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, let me know. Okay. Thank you.